Welcome back. So today I want to take a look at the Retro Flag NES Pi 4 case for the Raspberry Pi 4, but I also want to compare it to this Argon Neo case that I've been really enjoying. I've had it for a while. When I first bought this, it was $33 and came with this fan hat, which also had a power button that you can install a script to use, a little safe shutdown. Essentially, the Neo case was a big heat sink and it's performed very well for me. The kit also came with a nice power supply that was 5.25 volts at 3.5 amps, a little more powerful than the Retroflag power supply that comes with the NES Pi 4 case. The NES Pi 4 case does come with this little micro HDMI to HDMI adapter and it's junk, mine broke the second I started using it. But the cool thing with the NES Pi case here, the, this four, is that it has this little cartridge. Like things are rearranged and done a little differently compared to the original one. You can use an SSD drive in this system. I thought that was really neat. But here we go, a little comparison to the original NES Pi case. As you see, it is bigger and they have rearranged a few things, making it a little nicer in my opinion, but essentially it's the same case. But the one big thing that I really like is that with the four version for the Raspberry Pi 4, that little black trim that's on the side on the original one, it was like a sticker and I hated the way that looked. On this new one, it's an actual plastic mold. So just wanted to point that out. I really dig those kind of details. Looks a lot nicer in my opinion, just with that. But here we go. So the NES Pi 4 case does come with this huge ass heat sink fan, which is really nice. I already have some like thermal pads attached to some stuff here, but I just want to quickly go through the installation. Now with this little cartridge that you can put an SSD, there is an adapter in that top shell that you plug in. But essentially, this thing is really easy to put together. You're gonna put the USB ports as such, as I've showed them here, line everything up and get the Pi 4 in there, right? And then you just have one other attachment that you need to plug into the GPIO. And you do have to pay attention to how that is situated. If you plug it in the opposite way, the system will not power on. So now we need to attach this big heat sink. Like I said, I have these thermal pads already on there. Uh, this kit only came with two little thermal pads, but I put some additional ones in the middle to make sure it was touching there. You do use these black screws to screw it down, not toward the plastic. It's just two black screws on the front there, more toward where all the cables are at. So you're gonna attach it that way on the bottom and then on the top over there, the, the bottom two sides there on the long side there. So get those screwed in and that's about it. You just got to plug in that fan and we're ready to rock. So we do have a switch here. If you want to use the safe shutdown on or off, there is a script that you would have to install if you want to use that. So they did print that on the manual here. So you would want to go ahead and follow those directions, go to that GitHub page and get that script, right? But now we're ready to just put everything back together and test this thing out. So we do have to plug in that SSD port USB to get everything in there. Even if you're not using it, just plug it in so nothing's attaching. You're not accidentally shorting something. You do have six screws on the bottom that you got to get in there. I'm not going to screw everything in for you guys. I know some people enjoy that, but not everybody, right? So the cartridge here, you would simply just put your SSD in here and there are four screws to keep everything attached. Very simple stuff. The two bigger screws are like to mount the SSD to the case there, then you'd pop it in. I'm not gonna be using an SSD, but what I wanted to do was compare the temperatures between the Argon Neo and the NES Pi 4 case and give you guys kind of my thoughts. Which do I prefer? So let's do it. Okay, so with testing the temperature with the Pi 4 in both of these cases, the one thing you have to keep in mind is that these are my results. You may not have the same exact results. I pretty much live in the pits of hell with how hot it gets where I'm at and where I'm testing this at. So definitely your environment can, you know, play a part in how hot the Pi 4 gets. So keep that kind of thing in mind. Now I did test both of these cases, the same environment, same time of day and same, you know, ambient room temperature, right? And neither of them got anywhere near getting an over temperature warning. So with the Pi 4, if you get over 80 degrees Celsius or 176 degrees Fahrenheit, the CPU will be throttled and you get an over temperature warning. 
right? That's an attempt to try to cool the system down. Now, if it gets even hotter than that, over 85 degrees Celsius, which I believe is 185-ish Fahrenheit, both the CPU and the GPU will be throttled. That's like an extreme warning there, right? So like I said, same environment, same everything with this test. And with the NES Pi 4 case, it seems fine, but I'm definitely getting a lot hotter results than I would have hoped for, especially with that big heatsink fan that's in there. But I did test this with both the top on and the top off because the first time I ran it, I ran it for about an hour with the top on, I got 129 degrees Fahrenheit or 54 degrees Celsius. So it was getting pretty hot, but like I said, nowhere near that over temperature and it remained consistent. I constantly checked it after that over an hour, you know, close to another hour. It stayed about the same. So I did test the temperature with the top off of the NES Pi case. I took it off, let it sit for about 15 minutes while running and then checked it a few times after that up to another 15 minutes. So about 30 minutes total. And all of my checks, I was getting about the same temperature reading, 118 Fahrenheit, 48 Celsius. Didn't really fluctuate much. It just kind of stayed around that with the top off. But who's gonna use this thing with the top off? No one. But I really just wanted to see what the difference would be. And yeah, it was about an 11 degree Fahrenheit difference as far as the low and high with the top off versus the top on. Now my concern comes in with, if you're in a hotter climate like I am, and with this case being designed to use an SSD with that cartridge, there's some ventilation from where the SSD cartridge would go that if there's no cart in there, yeah, you're gonna get a little bit more ventilation. I ran this without the cartridge in there, but if the cart's in there, it's gonna block a little bit more of that ventilation, could possibly generate more heat. Now, since I haven't been able to test it with an SSD, I can't vouch for any increase in temperature, but I would just assume there would be. Now, going to the Argon Neo case, which, like I said, I have been using this thing nonstop since I've got it. The, the high temperature that I got with this device was 115 degrees Fahrenheit or 44 degrees Celsius. I would get a low of around 108 Fahrenheit, but it seemed like 111 was around where it liked to stay in the climate that I'm in. For me, that, that seems pretty darn acceptable. Uh, you know, even with the NES Pi case, the temperatures are not getting to that extreme over temperature area, but it does run quite a bit hotter. The ventilation is just not as good, in my opinion. Well, you know, the Argon case is just a full on heat sink other than the bottom piece with the the plastic tray that it sits in. And with how it's designed, I, I just think it does an excellent job. So either way you go, I really don't think you're making a bad choice. It's just gonna be up to preference, right? The NES Pi case is a nice looking case. It, it has that aesthetic that people like and the way it's situated kind of makes things a little nicer when you have this set up, having you know, all the ports on the back and then the USBs on the front, that kind of thing, and just the options you have with it. So it's definitely a nice option, right? The Argon Neo, very basic looking. I think it looks sleek, but I mean, it's just very basic. It doesn't really stand out too much. It does a great job. And if you can by chance get that fan hat and install the safe power, you know, script, it's an excellent option as well. So really just gonna be up to you to decide. I like both of them, but I think for me, having that smaller footprint and not really caring about having an NES style aesthetic, I think I'll probably just go back to the Neo case. The only issue with that is I haven't, I mean, for me, there's no issue because I have one, but for people looking into it, the listing from my order, I go into it and go straight to that listing and it's not there with the, the fan hat any longer. So I'm not sure if that's still being sold or if you can buy it elsewhere. I'll have to take a look, but I'll put this, you know, links in the description for both of these devices. The NES Pi case is going for about $40. I think that's a good deal with everything you get here. Comparing it to my full Neo setup, it's 33 bucks. So very close in price there. So I'm just gonna be up to you guys. So really do appreciate it. And with that said, I will catch y'all next time. Peace out, bye-bye, and boom, bye.